Native Instruments introduced their first iOS DJ app, Tractor DJ, over half a decade ago. And after what feels like an eternity, they finally updated the app to a completely new version that they're calling Tractor DJ 2. And this new version isn't just for iOS, Native Instruments has decided to make Tractor DJ cross-platform and have developed a macOS version and a Windows version as well. And these new versions of Tractor DJ continue the legacy of Tractor DJ being a low budget but fully featured DJ software with beginners in mind and they've even added more new features. Now before we dig any deeper into the new version of Tractor DJ, be sure you subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks videos and gear and software reviews just like this one. Now let's get into the review of Tractor DJ 2. Although some might scoff at Tractor DJ as it has its beginnings as just an iOS app, be assured that this is a fully featured piece of DJ software that rides the lines of being accessible to beginners while maintaining the kind of features that even seasoned DJs look for. So now let's take a deeper look at Tractor DJ 2 and all of its features. So now let's start with the iOS version of Tractor DJ 2. So we'll go ahead and open the app. And here we have what they call the jog wheel view, where you have your two stacked waveforms here at the top. And then below that we have our two deck sections and a mixer section. So let's start with the deck section. So to the left and right, we have a jog wheel right here, as well as your tempo fader. And then if we switch to the hot cue view, we have our eight pads for our different eight hot cues, which is nice that it's really easy to switch in between. And then that's mirrored on both sides. Then here in the middle, we have our mixer section. So we have a three band EQ that's really easy to use. Just touch it. And then if you double tap on each one, it'll go ahead and reset to zero, which is nice. Then above that we have, you'll see it says delay. If I click on that, I can click on that and click on those four little boxes. And then you can switch to the four different effects that you can use on each channel. So for instance, I can turn the filter on and then it becomes kind of like a touchpad where if I scroll up, it becomes a high pass filter. If I go ahead and move down, it becomes a low pass filter. So if I switch to another effect, if I go up, it becomes a delay with a high pass. And then if I scroll down, it's a delay with a low pass. Now below that there's, you'll see this kind of dashed circle um, where it, there's two different kind of modes for this touchpad. So right now you'll see that if I just go ahead and let go, it returns to zero when it's this dashed circle. If I tap on that, you'll see that it switches modes and now if I scroll up and I let go, it stays right there. So if I double tap, it'll go back to zero, just like the EQ, which is nice. So if you want to keep the effect on and you don't want to have to, you know, touch it or, you know, you need to move your fingers around somewhere else, you can leave the effect on. I like using it in this mode where once I let go, the effect turns off just so I don't forget to turn the effect on and off. Really simple, really easy. And I'm glad that they give you the option. Then below that, you have your crossfader that has a nice mixing curve. You're not going to be doing any quick scratches with the curve on this crossfader. And unfortunately, Tractor didn't give us the option to change the curve of the crossfader in this software. Uh, I really wish they did, but maybe that's something that they can add in an update. So now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and switch views. So we can go to the waveform view right here. And this is your classic Tractor DJ um, you know, view that we saw in the first version of Tractor DJ. But let's go ahead and load some music to this real fast. This is the uh, library view, but we will talk about that in a second. Let's go back to the deck. So now that we have some music loaded, you'll see that you have some nice big waveforms and it's really easy to pinch to zoom. You know, we can use the overview waveform to kind of jump around by tapping on it just like this. Of course, this is available in our jog wheel view as well where I can just kind of tap around, tap around the overview waveform. I can still pinch to, to zoom. And it's really nice that Tractor gives you two different views in this new version. What's nice too is that switching between them, yes, you can do this, but what's really cool is that I can just take this little line right here below the waveforms and I can switch really quickly between the two. So it's even faster to switch and it's really seamless to go between, you know, this view and the waveform view. Let's start by talking about how the tempo and uh, the sync works. So let's switch back to this. Notice I do have sync on both. So it's a smart sync. So if I move one fader, both of them will move together, which is really nice. Now, if I turn sync off, I can move this independently. And then you can see the BPM right to, you know, either to the left or right, depending on the deck. And you can see it moving. So if I, again, if I turn sync on, it'll jump right back to the right BPM. And what's nice too, is that it's a smart sync, meaning that it'll wait and it'll be quantized to 
make sure that when you hit the cue point, it'll be right on time. So let me give you an example of that. It's easier to show you than it is to kind of explain it. So we'll start the song on the left deck. Notice there's that little white space because it's waiting for it to be let go on beat. So if I hit play, there you go. And I can mix between the two. Really simple, really easy. The sync works really well, really tight, as long as the beat grids are really tight. So let's go through how to adjust those beat grids. So let's switch down into this waveform view. Now all I have to do is go ahead and tap on the tempo right there. And then I have the option to either half or double the beat grid set the beat grid or reset it to the original settings when uh, you imported the song into Tractor. So for example, this beat grid is on point, but let's just kind of mess it up on purpose. So I just hit set downbeat. Notice the beat grid shifted. And if I wanted to set it right, can move that back to the right spot, set downbeat again, and it's right back locked in. Really simple, really easy to get your beat grids nice and tight and uh, on point to make sure that sync works as well as time-based effects like the delay. So this is pretty much all the features that you get in the, you know, the deck views. So let's go over the library view again. So now that we have the library view open, we can go through uh, everything from left to right. So here at the top, we have all of the tracks that we've imported into Tractor. Then we have some playlists right here. And then, uh, if I tap on the button below it, we have the music that's stored locally on your iPad. Currently, I don't have any music on this iPad. Now below this is the really exciting one. So if we click on that, this is the SoundCloud Go Plus integration. So if you have a SoundCloud Go Plus account, you can access all of your music that you have, you know, saved or liked in um, all the playlists that you have saved, and it'll automatically load directly into this DJ software. So what's nice is that once you download uh, Tractor DJ2, it comes with a free 30-day trial account. So if you don't have one, you have 30 days to try it out to see if you like it. And there's thousands of songs on SoundCloud, so I'm sure you can find a, at least a couple tracks that you like. So here you can see that I have a bunch of tracks that I've liked on my SoundCloud account, and then I can go through all my different playlists that I've saved. Now I'll go ahead and load one. So I can just click on it and hit tap to load. Now notice it takes a little bit of time to load because this is actually live downloading the song to the iPad and it needs uh, an internet connection to go ahead and access the song. So there is no offline mode and you can't access this music unless you have an internet connection. So that means either Wi-Fi or if you're using an iPad, uh, an iOS device, it needs to have maybe 4G or some type of cellular connection um, to access all this music. So it's not like some other DJ apps and with streaming services where you can actually save them locally or kind of like how Spotify works on your phone. You need an internet connection to access this music. So definitely keep that in mind if you intend to DJ with SoundCloud Go Plus. Okay, now so let's go and load some tracks that have some cue points and a little bit more stuff to them. Bang, bang. And now let's go through the other features of the library section. So right here on the right side, if I have a song playing, I can tap on this light bulb. And it'll give me track suggestions. So Tractor is actually going through my library and seeing what songs it thinks it might be able to mix together. And you can actually see that it's given me four different options of songs that it thinks that'll mix well with the song that's currently playing. So that's really cool. And then again, if I stop that, if I start playing the other one, Right there, it shows me four different choices. So it's really cool, especially for beginner DJs that are just kind of getting the hang of things and are kind of curious like, oh man, what song do I mix with this? Having some track suggestions can be helpful. Now I can switch over to this right here. And this is cool. This is what they're calling the prepare playlist or queue. And this is nice because it's kind of like the prepare crate in Serato DJ Pro where I can just load a whole bunch of songs like that and just have them ready. Um, songs that I want to play later and as I load them they disappear from this playlist which is really nice so I don't have to worry about did I play this song already did I not I know that once I've loaded them it's gone from that list and I can just keep going through whatever's left and it's a really nice way of working and making sure you have a couple more tracks ready and locked and loaded ready to go and not having to worry about if you've played them or not 
All right, so now let's jump back into the actual deck view and just kind of go through kind of mixing a couple songs. So again, we'll just use these as an example. Have that turned up, have the song playing. Really simple and easy to use. Hit play, it's quantized. So we get up, bring the lows out. is that. Now let's try adding some effects. So here's some delay. Maybe some reverb. So that's nice. I can hit a reverb. Switch, filter, same thing. Oh, the one that didn't go through yet, the gator. Classic tractor effect. Let's try it on this song. There, you can hear it a little bit better there. Really simple and really easy to use. I love this app. I love what Native Instruments has done with it. The changes that they've made, really nice. and really makes it feel like more of a fully featured DJ app, especially on the iPad. Now that we've gone through the iPad version, let's switch over to the desktop version to see what's different. Now, a lot of this is gonna be the same, but there are some slight differences, especially because you get all that extra screen real estate on your desktop or laptop. And here we have the desktop version of Tractor DJ2. And this one looks a lot more like Tractor Pro 3. And that's mainly because you have a little bit more screen real estate and you can add the library section and the deck section at the exact same time. So we have this view right here. So this is the stack waveform view, very similar to the iPad version. You just kind of click and drag the songs and then you have them here at the top in a stacked waveform view. Then you have your, you know, classic tractor uh, deck section with mixer section in the middle. And then you have your library section here below and you'll see, you know, you still have the same functionality of you know, the prepare suggestions. And then you have the tracks that you've loaded to tractor. And then you have your SoundCloud integration and notice it's the same um, as what I had on the iPad because it's connected to the same account. So here's the big difference is that you now have three views instead of just the two. You don't just get the, jog wheel or the waveform view. Now you have the addition of the classic tractor view. So this right here, now this really reminds me of Tractor Pro 3 or even all the versions of Tractor Pro all the way to Tractor Pro 1 where you have these two very distinct uh, deck sections that have the waveform in the middle um, and you don't get the stacked waveforms and then the mixer section right in the middle. Now one other smaller difference here is that um, the way that the effects are handled. So on the previous version, you know, it was kind of like a, a touch strip here. It's just like a knob like you would find on a controller. So um, I can switch it just by going through this list right here. And this is much like the mixer effects that you find in Tractor Pro 3. So I'm, I'm glad that they kept the kind of uh, same design mentality between these two pieces of software. And I really like how this is integrated. And I can see why they decided to go with the kind of touch strip on the iOS version, because that makes a lot of more sense. And it just was a little bit more flexible when using a touch screen. But on the desktop version, especially if you were gonna have a controller connected to this, this makes more sense having it just like you would find on Tractor Pro 3. The last view that I didn't show is the waveform view. And this one is just like uh, what you'd find on the iOS version. So really easy to see, um, you know, the two big stacked waveforms. 
Now I could see myself using this if I have a controller connected, but if I'm actually just mixing, just using my computer, I really can't see myself using that. Um, this one really usable, this one as well. But I'm glad that they gave that extra kind of classic tractor view to the desktop version. Just makes sense. You have that extra room. It gives you uh, even more room for the library in this view, so it's really nice. I like the fact that both versions are really similar, so if you're using one and you're switching to the other, I think they're designed really well and really easy to use and really fun to DJ on. Overall, Tractor DJ2 is a great package, especially considering that it's free. It's the perfect way for anybody that's interested in DJing to get started. It has all the features that a beginner DJ would need in the digital DJ software and makes a great second or backup option for all the seasoned DJs out there. And with what's provided at this price point, there's no reason that a DJ shouldn't at least give Tractor DJ2 a try. So we hope that you liked this review, and if you did, be sure to like and comment on this video. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks and review videos just like this one. Now, get good, get out there, and make the moments.